In this short video, I want to demonstrate how a material called perioderm is being used to treat multiple moderate to severe recession defects in the maxillary arch. As you can tell, the teeth that are being treated are teeth numbers 4 through 13. Before we get started on what perioderm is, let's first look at the patient's radiograph. The reason a radiograph is important is because the level of the interproximal bone is the ultimate determining factor in the predictability of the percentage of root coverage that can be accomplished with root coverage procedures. Before considering any periodontal plastic surgery procedures, such as a periodontal graft, it is recommended that a patient's inflammation is under control. In other words, please check for pockets and treat accordingly before attempting any type of oral plastic surgery procedure. Before getting started with the surgery, I often like to perform a preoperative examination in order to assess the severity of the recession defects. In addition to the amount of recession, as well as the level of the interproximal bone radiographically, I also like to make an assessment of the quality of the surrounding gum tissue, whether or not the tissue is keratinized or attached, how shallow or deep the vestibule is, whether or not dark triangles exist, the mobility of the teeth, wear patterns of the teeth, whether or not the teeth are super erupted, and so on and so forth. All of these factor into the degree of uh, root coverage that can be expected following a periodontal graft or any other type of periodontal plastic surgery procedure. The surgery begins by making bleeding points with the periodontal probe at a point apical to the tip of the papilla. At this point in this video demonstration, a number 15 blade is used to connect the dots, if you will, which are the bleeding points at the base of the papilla. Scalloping is then made with the number 15 blade, with the tip of the blade being directed at the crest of the bone. It is important that the initial incisions are sharp, neat, and well-defined, because this flap will later be coronally advanced over the recession defects, thus creating the new gingival architecture. For this patient's case, the incision design extends from tooth number 4 to tooth number 13. Once the crestal incisions have been completed, two vertical releasing incisions are made to aid the flap release and passive closure. Once the initial incisions are complete, a full thickness flap is reflected to approximately 2 to 3 millimeters beyond the mucogingival junction. A round diamond burr and a high-speed handpiece is then utilized to deepithelialize the papilla. This is important because the connective tissue side of the flap must be closely adapted to the exposed connective tissue of the papilla, not the epithelium. The root should also be scaled at this time. As you can tell, despite the fact that the flap has been reflected well past the mucogingival junction, the flap is hardly mobile. This can be easily tested with a simple cotton plier. In order to properly mobilize the flap, sharp dissection is a must. Utilizing a sharp number 15 blade, the sharp dissection is initiated at the distal vertical incision and carried towards the midline towards the other distal vertical incision. While performing this periosteal release, care must be taken not to perforate the flap or any vital structures. Once the flap has been properly mobilized, it is now time to open the perioderm material. Perioderm is an acellular dermal graft. In other words, it's human processed tissue. There are several benefits of perioderm other products similar to it. My favorite is that it only requires a three to five minute hydration period versus multiple washes and up to 40 minutes of hydration for other materials. Other benefits include the fact that it is not refrigerated. It is not soaked in antibiotics. Its thickness is also uniform and comes in a variety of sizes. In addition to all this, it also has superior handling capability and is very easy to suture. Once the perioderm has been thoroughly hydrated, which once again only requires about three to five minutes of hydration, the perioderm is then ready to be trimmed 
and taken over to the recession defects. Although there are two sides to the perioderm, I have not found its orientation to affect the success of the perioderm graft procedure. While fitting the graft over the recession defects, it is important that you have enough material to extend at least 3 millimeters beyond the dehiscences. As you place the perioderm over the recession defects, you'll immediately notice how the graft material absorbs blood. This is in stark contrast to similar products. In addition to the wettability of the perioderm with blood, it is also easy to see from the video how easily adaptable the material is over the root surfaces. Once the graft material is in place, it is now time to suture the material. My favorite suture material for this purpose is 5O Vicryl Suture. The type of suture that I prefer are independent sling sutures. Once the perioderm is secure with the sling sutures, the graft can then be manipulated around the CEJs of the teeth. Here I am demonstrating this using the blunt end of a number one Woodson. Once the perioderm has been adapted over all the recession defects, in this case it's every tooth from number 4 through 13, with the exception of tooth number 8, which did not have any recession, it is now time to suture the primary flap. Once again utilizing 5 vicryl suture and also the independent sling suture technique, this can be accomplished. It is important to note that in order for this graft to be successful, the entire perioderm graft must be covered by the primary flap. During the course of placing these sutures, it is important to note how easily and passively the flap is uh, being translated over the perioderm graft. When securing the sutures, care should be taken not to put excess tension on the flap. Our procedure concludes by securing the distal vertical incisions utilizing 5 vicryl sutures using either the interrupted suture technique or a continuous suture. These sutures will need to be removed at approximately two weeks. All in all, this procedure took approximately one hour and 20 minutes. At the two-week post-operative visit, you'll immediately observe the amount of root coverage that we accomplished using a perioderm graft. Please also note the excellent condition of the tissue as well as the results at six months. Thank you for watching the NLXP. See you next time.